Hey everybody and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. In this episode we're going to be taking on Stone Tower Temple. Now this temple is hands down my favorite temple within the game because look at this place. It is amazing. You have to go upside down and all over the place to complete this temple. It is really crazy and hectic and is by far the longest and most difficult temple within uh, this game. I mean people do say that you know Great Bay is more difficult but I would say this one is if you're trying to collect everything so yeah. But anyways I picked up something for this special occasion and that is the Chateau Romani. With this drink we'll have infinite magic for the rest of this 3a cycle so yeah I kind of want to use it so I can spam different kind of arrows since we're gonna be getting another arrow upgrade in this temple as well as uh, it's gonna prove to be really useful for the boss in this temple so having infinite arrows overall is just really good or infinite magic rather so we can spam uh, different types of arrows but yeah okay I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot down this guy you know what I can't so yeah, let's just get started. I don't really care if this bomb chew annoys the heck out of me. I was kind of waiting for it, so I'm glad I got hit already. But, yeah, welcome to the temple itself, guys. It is really freaking awesome, and I can't wait to actually jump into the thick of things. But, all right, so, so far here, all we need to do is just shoot this eye right in the center. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. It would have given me a chance to hook onto this chest that appears. Uh, that will give us our first stray fairy, but instead I thought I'd get hit by the bomb chew. I mean, that makes more sense, right? Anyways, we can actually make this jump like this. Uh, it looks like you can't make it, and it looks like you're gonna fall, but now you can make it, as long as you're good with jumping and stuff. But there you go, look at that. Spamming fire arrows like nobody's business, because I have the Chateau Romani upgrade, which is amazing. I love this milk. I mean, yeah, it did cost me 200 rupees, but we're gonna have a full wallet by the end of this temple, and you're gonna see why. Anyways, here I want to go ahead and take out uh, either my bombs or my blast mask. I prefer using the blast mask because you can time it. Uh, you just go ahead and click the blast mask, you know, B, and then it explodes immediately instead of putting down a bomb and waiting for it to go off. That's kind of annoying. But in here, yeah, as you can tell, is a giant uh, Majora block. But. I believe in the N64 version there was just two really small crates that could be broken and that made it difficult because if you accidentally broke the crate you'd have to leave this room for them to respawn. So in this 3DS remake they fixed it up and added a giant Majora block here that we just need to push to one of the switches. Now there are more switches we're going to have to press on and uh, to keep them pressed in because you have to have all of them pressed in you need to play the song that will keep them pressed in. And what is that? Well, I'm sure you guys should know by now because in the last episode we used it a bunch and that is the Elegy of Emptiness. So let's create an outer shell of Darmeni the Third, and uh, have him, you know, stand on this freaking giant switch. And this one is only meant for Darmeni because he's the only one that can weigh it down. The smaller switches like this one can be used as uh, Zora Link or Link himself. Not Deku Link, sadly. We're not really going to play the Elegy of Emptiness with Deku Link within this temple because all of the switches cannot be weighed down as a Deku Scrub. Uh, it's kind of sad, but it's fine because, I mean, if it could be weighed down, you wouldn't need this Majora block because there are four switches in total and we can make four copies of ourselves. But, well, you know, obviously the Deku Link couldn't weigh down a switch, so it doesn't matter if we can make a shell of that deck with link but let's go ahead and play the song again uh it takes a while to play the song itself if you don't have it memorized especially but what you can do instead of watching the animation a bit come in just spam the b button and there you go so instead of watching this guy up here uh we can easily move from the animation which is pretty nice anyways in this room you just want to go ahead and use your blast mask on this cracked floor should be obvious that yes we can jump down let's go ahead and head down like this all right so, what I did here is I just skipped uh, a small portion where I was going to have to hookshot to this chest. Or hook that to an, hookshot to an area where I could hookshot to, which is like this. There you go, that would get you the chest. But I want to see if I could make it all pro-like, and I did. Uh, so yeah, there's a stray fairy in that chest. Anyways, transform into a Goron so we can beat up these guys. Uh. Hey, buddy. Uh. Yeah, I'm just going to beat them all up because um, we, need to, we need to kill all of these Armos within this room so we can get ourselves something pretty special but once we do that and they're all about to set off and die let's go ahead and remove this ginormous block with the reflection that our mirror shield gives 
uh, from the light, and then we can just continue on. And don't worry, if you say, oh, what if I enter this temple at night, will I get the sunlight, you know, peeking in within this room? Yes, you will. Regardless, you get the sunlight from any room that you need it in. I'm gonna open up this chest as I get attacked by the Armos, but I believe this is gonna be the dungeon map straight up. Uh, I wanna say it is, but I, okay, I'm right, whatever. <laughs> Not like we really needed it because I know where every single room in this temple is, and if you don't have the dungeon map and do end up entering every single room, it's technically like you have the dungeon map. All the dungeon map does is add on uh, areas you haven't been into, but yeah, it's kind of lame. And it's still helpful, I guess, if you're new to the temple. But there we go. We got ourselves a small key from this room from killing all the Armo statues. So that is good. Now let's go ahead and roll over to this locked door and continue on within the temple. And this room is going to get a little tricky. By, what I mean by tricky is by... Uh, they changed it up in the original game. Normally what you could do is you could get grabbed by this Dexy hand and he should toss you up. But instead, he tosses you back. Um, and what it would do it is it would get you access to this platform here that we already have access to and then there's, there would have been a switch that we can hit Which actually I'm gonna hit this one You want to hit this one now by the way? It's not like you can do anything about it But there's a chest you'll be able to get much later on within the temple But another thing we could have done is actually uh, Get this switch to be pressed in but as you can tell we can't actually jump on it so to uh, activate this switch over here you're gonna have to be a little tactical with your Zora skills and do a dolphin jump. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it and hopefully I'll be able to execute it maybe on my first try. Uh, there we go, perfect. Alright, that wasn't hard at all. Now I could try to like I guess sequence break this whole temple and see if I can make this jump. I doubt it will let me. Okay, it won't, thank god. I've actually been really upset if it did, because that would have been a huge glitch you can, you know, just do what to skip a huge portion of the temple but they don't have that within the game i mean they did have it in great bay temple i showed it off how you can jump to the boss key but here i don't think you can make it i'm sure someone can find a way to actually do it because it doesn't this uh fence doesn't look that secure but now that we got ourselves another small key we're gonna go ahead and advance by just swimming through here and yeah, a lot of things are upside down. Like I said earlier, we're going to be going upside down within this temple. There are areas you literally have to go upside down in. Which, as crazy as that sounds, that's how it works. And here's another upside down chest. So, we can't obtain it now, but we'll be able to obtain it later on within the temple. That's all we need to know. Anyways, oh, it's so nice I can spam the Zora swimming mechanics so fast without having to worry about um, wasting magic. So yeah, anyways, make your way up to the top of this room, and this is actually going to give us access to the first room within the temple. Uh, you can tell on the map that, you know, we're facing towards it, but we can't head to it because it is blocked by a giant sun block thingy. So let's go ahead and fix that by shooting light, or yeah, the ray of light into this mirror with our mirror shield. If I can actually get a better angle, there we go. I can, yeah, just charge up this mirror until it has a lot of sunlight soaked into it. And once it does, it will shoot its own ray of sunlight where you can quickly run up to it and then use it to shoot something else you didn't have reach for. So I think that's a pretty interesting, like, puzzle. But now that we removed that giant block, we can get the compass straight away. Yeah, you get the compass and dungeon map and the item of the temple real soon. But look at all of these chests that you know most of them we can't even open because they're all upside down <laughs> you can just see them all it's kind of sad but don't worry we'll be getting them all either way one thing i love about the stray fairies in this game is almost every chest that doesn't have a small key or you know the three main items within a temple is a stray fairy so you feel obligated to get all of the chests like in other Zelda games where you see a chest, you're like, okay, I gotta go out of my way to get the chest, let me do that, and then you realize it's just five rupees or something. That really upsets me at times, but yeah, okay. I'm actually gonna try something. Let's see, can I shoot this? No, you can't. There's no way the sunlight will shoot that far. Anyways, you want to light this specific eye with the power of the sun. And there we go, a chest shell up here where we can pick up another stray fairy. But before I do continue on, I'm going to go ahead and give this mirror some sunlight with our mirror shield and quickly run up towards it so we can light this. There we go. And this is, I believe, should actually give us another stray fairy. So two stray fairies within this room. Also, oh no, the ninja irons. Are, 
I have no idea how to pronounce their name because they have a really weird name, but yeah, they'll try to block you. I'll just call them uh, upside down Gorons, you know, because we're in a temple that requires going upside down in, so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you want to be aware of those upside down Gorons because they will uh, beat you up if they get the chance to. Alright, let's go ahead and try to shine light on this. Oh, didn't really get a chance because I barely charged this mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do this again. So there you go. Get some sunlight. You know, get that tan. And I think that's enough. Now let's go ahead and quickly run over here and charge up this one. Once this one goes out, I'll just run up to this one. Now I can quickly... Continue on by removing this giant sun block and that's pretty much all we need to do within this room as you can tell There are no more chests located here and we can just advance now Here is where we need our Deku mask. Oh another reason why I really love this temple And it's my favorite within the game is it requires uh, The use of all three transformation masks like you got to use them all to actually complete this temple which is so awesome like yeah, you don't get a specific transformation mask for this temple in particular, unlike the other three, but this temple requires all three, and, uh, it's just overall really cool, the music especially. I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate uh, with me there. I mean, the music is hands down amazing for this area, and the area leading up to it, which is Akana Canyon, also has amazing music. Because I wonder, really? Jumping from all the way down there wasn't strong enough to ground pound that switch. Anyways, do a normal ground pound, and here you want to be really quick. Now, I don't know if they made the timer uh, any slower within this version of the game, but yeah, there is a timer for when you pound on that switch. I believe, at least I didn't hear any, but in the N64 version there were, and it was really hard to do because you literally had to make it on time without bumping into anything as a Goron. But as you saw, I was able to make it hit the switch, and now another chest appeared. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up, so, yeah. But let's go ahead and transform into a Deku Scrub and continue on throughout here. Uh, man, this music is so freaking good. I'm pretty sure it also plays at night, so I don't have to worry about it transitioning into the night of the second day. And even if it does, that's going to be fine. I can't forward time to the final day, because that won't give us enough time to actually continue on within the temple and complete it. But... Luckily, these weird gust thingies will push you up and refill your uh, Deku flowers, even if it goes out. So, yeah. This is our sixth stray fairy. Not bad. Really easy to get. Anyways, our first mini boss is right up ahead. Let's go ahead and enter this door and get ready. There actually are a lot of mini bosses within this temple. So, this is the first one. And this is, uh, look at it, the actual Garo leader. So, yeah, we may have had his mask, but we did not look nearly as cool as him. Look at how awesome he looks. He's going to jump up in the sky and try to sky dive towards you, and you can easily avoid him and then attack him like this. So, jump, slash, rinse, repeat. Really easy battle, honestly. I want to see what Tattle has to say about him. So, that's the Garo Master. You can't really fight him like an ordinary Garo. Just dodge those swords. Do dodge. Not dodge makes no sense. All right, let's go ahead and... Oh! Oh, wow, I walked into that one. All right, come at me, bro. Come at me. All right, there you go. Now he's going to jump up in the air. I just run. Slash. Uh, there's other ways you can do, uh, use to fight him. Like, you can just sit and spin attack a bunch. You may get hit in return, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and try it, see if I can actually hit him. And let me actually look at the dude while I'm fighting him. Maybe that would make a little more sense. So, uh, really? That didn't work? That was, like, the most spontaneous spin attack of all time. But I guess it didn't. Alright, I'm going to go back to the normal way I fight this dude, where I generally avoid his attacks. Okay, let's just get more distance. There we go. Now jump up into the air. Or don't see me at all. <laughs> this is interesting. Ugh, come on! Yeah, this guy's easy, but I'm kind of playing a little dumb against him. Really? He's going to block all these attacks? There we go. We're done. Finally! And now... To think I could be defeated. Although you are my rival, you are spectacular. I shall take my final bow by opening my heart and revealing my wisdom. So just like all the other Garos, he's going to give us a small tip before he goes bye-bye. So, if you shoot that which burns with the sacred golden light into the glowing red emblem outside the temple, the world shall be arranged so that the earth is born in the heavens and the moon is born on the earth. Which is essentially going to happen because the moon is going to crash down into the earth. So, that's a cool uh, way to word it, but, yeah. 
Do not forget these words. Die I shall, leaving no corpse. Because that is the way of the Garo. That is the law of the Garo. Cool, man. Just cool, cool. Alright, so that was the leader of the Garo. He... <laughs> He was an interesting character, you know, he also suicided with a bomb before he died. I mean, the other Garos just burned, but this guy literally used a bomb because he, I guess he wasn't dead yet. He was like, all right, I'm just gonna leave because I don't want to die to a little kid. So that happened. And now we have another little mini boss battle. This is not really much of a boss battle compared to what we just had against that Garo leader. And that is, I believe right up ahead, we're gonna fight this thing. Okay, maybe not, maybe. This is going to be a lot more straightforward than I thought, and we just need to kill this bad boy. So, hey there, little buddy. Ugh. Yeah. There are some rupees down here that I could grab, but don't worry about the rupees. I'm going to get 200 rupees real easy. But, yeah, this is the mini boss battle I was speaking of. So, this is my friends has one ginormous eye, and it is known as Igor. So, simply attacking is no good. Yeah, we just got to attack its eye. Hey, welcome to the Legend of Zelda, where you attack eyes. If you have light arrows, especially with infinite magic, this is extremely easy. You just spam the light arrows into his eye and kill him just like so. And behind us, a chest will appear where we can get ourselves another stray fairy. I'm pretty sure of it, but yeah. With these light arrows, we're going to change the whole way of the temple as well. You're going to see what I mean. It's kind of cool how we're transitioning into uh, night of the second day here because I do want to take on the rest of the temple at night. I think that would give a cool theme to it. So you guys saw how it looks in the day. Now upside down, we're going to see how it looks at night. And yes, I said upside down because like the Garo said, we just have to attack a certain part, uh, which is the red emblem thing that he was speaking of. And that is outside of the temple. Yes, I'm leaving the temple so I can do this. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and shoot. Okay, I got to stop doing that. <laughs> we're going to shoot this emblem with our light arrows to change the world. It's going to alter the world entirely, having it completely upside down. So here I go. Oh my god. <laughs>